Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51%er show about women reshaping our world coming up. We take a look at the national impact of the abortion ban by Texas, which has now been sued by the US Justice Department. By contrast, France has given the go-ahead to offer free contraception to women aged under 25. Plus, the Afghan women using social media to celebrate their national costumes in protest at the Taliban's hardline laws rolling back women's rights. But first, it's the biggest curb to American women's constitutional right to an abortion in decades. Texas' controversial law and the Supreme Court's decision to allow it also setting a dangerous precedent. Republicans in other states are already considering similar measures, not just for abortion rights, but also other cultural hot-button issues. Emerald Maxwell has more. And just like that, Texas brought in a near total ban of abortion in the state. The most restrictive law in the United States prohibits abortion from about six weeks. That's often before a woman even knows she's pregnant. The Supreme Court's subsequent decision not to block the bill sent shockwaves across much of the country. The Supreme Court cannot act behind closed doors in the dark of night to overturn our rights, our rights for all of us. Two prior Supreme Court decisions, 1973's Roe v. Wade and 1992's Planned Parenthood v. Cassie, affirmed that a woman has a constitutional right to decide herself whether to have an abortion. But Texas's law is specifically designed to circumvent the courts because it's policed not by state officials but by members of the public who are incentivized with a $10,000 reward to sue anyone who helps someone get an abortion. Joe Biden's administration has filed suit against Texas. The act is clearly unconstitutional under long-standing Supreme Court precedent. The additional and further risk here is that other states uh, will follow similar models uh, with respect not only to this constitutional right, but uh, theoretically against any constitutional right. Planned Parenthood says the impact of Texas SB8 law is already being felt. It has made our health centers really crisis hotline centers. You know, we they are fielding calls every day from patients who are who are terrified, who are confused. 2021 has already been the worst year um, in nearly 50 years for abortion access in the country. More than 600 abortion restrictions have been introduced. More than and about 90 have been enacted into law. I think the Supreme Court allowing SB8 to go into effect has only emboldened them more. Anti-abortion lawmakers in at least five other Republican-controlled states have since said they're considering pushing bills similar to SB8. Mississippi, meanwhile, has mounted a different challenge and is openly asking the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. These moves may play well with the Republican base, but nationwide, banning abortion is unpopular. Some 60 percent of Americans say they believe it should be legal. People want to be able to control their own health care decisions. And what makes this law in Texas particularly vile is the fact that it empowers vigilantes to sue their neighbors. People are incredibly angry and disturbed by what's happening in Texas. And they are motivated city by city, state by state, to fight back. It's not just abortion rights that are endangered by this unusual legal strategy. The same enforcement mechanism is already applied in laws in Tennessee and Florida, restricting transgender students' bathroom use and their sports team participation. And France has decided to write another chapter in its history of contraception, announcing that it will now make birth control free for all women under the age of 25. At the present, free contraception only applies to minors in a previous move to end underage abortion. Luke Trago has the story. Free contraception for all French women under 25, something these students think has been a long time coming. I think there are girls who wouldn't have had the chance to get it, who don't have the means. It's much better for them that it's free. I think they should have done this a long time ago. Fewer young women in France are using contraception than previously, mainly for financial reasons, and the move is a means to remedy the situation. 
From the beginning of next year, it becomes part of an existing package, including a checkup, prescriptions, and all care linked to contraception. France has seen its sexual health care advance gradually over the years. After its legalization in 1967, the pill became free on social security in 1974. Assurément, j'ai un équilibre dans mon dans mon ménage que je n'avais pas avant. For women who lived through that era, free contraception for under 25s is a logical next step. Si ça avait été à votre époque, qu'est-ce qu'aurait changé dans votre vie? Sexuality would have been freer. We were always scared. In my time, I'd have loved it to have been like this. It's great. While it brings France more in line with other European states such as the UK or Spain, which also offer free contraception, the idea has seen resistance elsewhere in the world, particularly from the religious right wing, with some governments restricting access, such as in Poland. In France, the move will cost 21 million euros, but it's thought it'll benefit 1.6 million young women. Now, in the wake of protests in Afghanistan's major cities, women are also using social media to speak out against the Taliban's hardline policies towards them. An online campaign has seen Afghan women across the globe share photos of themselves wearing traditional colourful costumes using the hashtag Do Not Touch My Clothes. Vadika Bal has more. Faced with a sea of black cloth on display outside Kabul University over the weekend, a rebellious riot of colour. It all began with this tweet by Afghan historian Dr. Bahar Jalali. It's a photo of her wearing an opulent green and red robe with a simple caption, this is Afghan culture, I am wearing traditional Afghan dress. And so a hashtag of collective fury was born. When I saw those women wearing something that I have never seen before uh, in Afghanistan, anywhere in Afghanistan, I don't want the world to, to, I don't want the world to think that's who we are. As the Taliban announces that all female students will be not only separated from their male counterparts, but also required to wear at the very least a hijab, Afghan women have been sharing images of the clothes that have made up their wardrobes for centuries. In stark rebuke to the Taliban's ultra-conservative clothing decrees, these photos are for some a representation of the diversity of Afghan culture. Afghanistan is a very diverse uh, country with over more than 14 different ethnic groups in Afghanistan. We all have our own um, unique traditional clothes and traditional attire, and none of them is the sort of what Taliban wants the woman to dress like. But it's not just clothes that have been driving the hashtag. As one Afghan journalist based in Canada tweeted, our culture is also our poetry, music, art and sports, all of which have either been banned or compromised under Taliban rule. Afghanistan's new leaders are determined to wind the clocks on hard-won freedoms, but it's clear Afghanistan's diaspora is watching closely. Iran is making a push for young people to meet and get married through a government-sponsored dating app. It's part of the government's effort to curb the rising age of marriage and a declining birth rate. The app's developers say the platform is off to a successful start, but some Iranians remain sceptical. Our Tehran correspondent Reza Sayer has more. Ever since she could remember, 27-year-old Parastu wanted to marry and start a family at a young age. But living in a mega city and growing up in a conservative family made things difficult. In a huge place like Tehran, to find someone who matches your qualities and values, well, that's a very difficult thing to do. So Parastu turned to Hamdam, Iran's first ever government-funded matchmaking app. Soon after came the wedding bells. The fact that I met him and I found him in this crowded world made me very happy. The government launched the Hamdan matchmaking app as part of an effort to increase what officials call stable and healthy marriages. Statistics show fewer young Iranians are getting married and having children. With the current state of Iran's struggling economy, many say they can't afford to get married. 
The outcome has been an aging population that Hamdam's developers hope to reverse. The more a country's population ages and gets older, the more it takes away from its growth. This is a danger not just for Iran, but for all societies. Zohre Hosseini is Hamdam's director. She says Hamdam, which means companion in Farsi, uses a scientific compatibility algorithm to match users with ideal partners. Hosseini says the app is based on Iran's Islamic norms and not a place for casual dating. We launch this platform for marriage. Entertainment and amusement have no place in Hamdam. Many bachelors say Hamdam could work, but they're not ready for marriage. I like being single and pursuing my goals by myself. With the current circumstances, I'm not in a position to get married. Despite the skepticism, developers say more than 150,000 users have downloaded Hamdam, hoping to follow in the now happily wed footsteps of Parastu and her husband. And that's it for now. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page, that of course being France24.51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.